Our whole 75th anniversary idea is about the future. It's about what comes next. We're looking at virtually every form of human endeavor to try to find the 75 people we think are worthy of inclusion. And it, and it is a global search. We're considering a good number of people who are creating new channels for the distribution of ideas with a particularly careful eye at the arts. When they talked about this whole 75 most influential people of the 21st century, just something immediately clicked in my head that this could be an incredible opportunity to tap into Lincoln's sort of futuristic vision of art and portraiture with this sort of future vision of these innovative people. The Cube project is a portraiture project, and at the highest level it's an idea. And the idea is to reinvestigate the portrait uh, using technology and using a new approach to it. First of all, there's this object, which is called the Cube, which is a physical object that has a footprint of 10 feet by 10 feet. It's 8 feet tall, and it's made out of welded steel with translucent acrylic. Mounted into it at 24 different locations are digital video cameras. Each camera has its own computer, just 24 computers, and each combination records through its own logic what it sees in the cube itself. So if I'm gonna do your portrait, we'd sit like this and I'd say to you, oh, what do you wanna bring into the cube with you? They could do something on their own, they could do something with props, they could do something with other people. And because it differs from a traditional portrait as a fixed moment in time, instead this takes place over 60 minutes. At the end of that hour, um, we have an incredible amount of footage. And it's taken over to another individual computer that starts to mash this and constantly recreate it on screen. So each moment on screen of someone's portrait is wholly unique. Some people are much more uh, expressive, willing to take risks, other people come in a little bit. And to that extent, it really is a portrait of that person, right? It's, it's really how they choose to identify or visualize themselves. The first release of control is what you do in there. I don't tell you what to do. My job is to facilitate what you're interested in doing. Uh, the second layer is what the cameras record. They all have independent logic, and they all record different things. And the third is how the computer and what the computer redisplays on screen. So it's kind of through this process of letting go and releasing that the final work is made. So time is constantly being churned and reassembled in different ways. We as human beings, one thing we really excel at is defining narrative. Like we really want to see narrative in things. So when these videos start to play on screen, I think what we start to do naturally is we start to create a story that goes along with them. And we try to ascribe certain actions or certain movements to a certain um, conscious direction that the person's taking. And it's only when you let go of that need for narrative and just kind of float within that space that you see that kind of beauty, that kind of randomness, that, that things can happen, again, like walking down the street, just things taking place around you. The Hearst Tower actually helped bring Manhattan into the 21st century. I mean, it is the most forward-thinking, the most environmentally conscious building that's been built in the city. And this was a form of art that's just saying, this is what comes next. Thank you.